Hello, today we're going to be looking at this mystery machine. Uh, what is it? We will find out in this video. The truth is, is I didn't have a blooming clue to start with. Uh, we got this from the Lucian Nunes Vaz collection and um, it's been quite a mystery from the start. Um, none of us actually knew. Nobody we were grabbing it from knew either. So I decided when I popped it and set it up over here the other day to shoot this little video just to kind of get the internet involved and asking. And here's the video. Hello, so I've been wiring something back together, this thing right over here, to figure out what it actually is. I've got it sort of doing something, but I still haven't got a bleeding clue what the fudge it is. So I'm hoping somebody on here recognises. So yeah, comment below what the fudge you think this thing is. And no, it is not a telephone exchange. So on the top relay cans, it's got select line on them. And on the bottom, these are the weird ones, it's got pulse gen, pulse generators. Think it's something to do with a train station, possibly. But these things, these things are weird. Basically, there's 24 of them in each set of four, and they're all different divisions of one. So one, and then it divides down to, yeah, all 24 of them. And when I push a relay to pretend it doing what it's meant to be doing, whatever that is, it does this. What? If you look carefully, when they're wiggling around, they're sending pulses through here. So there's 24 different speeds of pulses here. So yes, please theorise down in the comments what the fudge this thing might be. And yeah, some of the first kind of responses on Twitter and YouTube and things like that um, and in Facebook uh, were kind of hinting towards the idea of it might be something to do with the train uh, boards, the information boards, the times and all of the flip displays because if you've ever heard those old solary boards or anything like those, you would know they sort of sound like this. But I think that's merely down to the similar mechanics of it and not the actual function. Um, so but a, a few people actually got it bang on, which is great on Twitter, uh, on Facebook primarily, uh, Jason and also um, Paul uh, LPBK who found this in one of the old journals that he had, uh, 1963. Uh, this is uh, linked below as well on his website. And it basically outlines what this actually is. It's a selective party uh, line exchange, a selective party line exchange. I'll get that right. So um, the story is, is well, if you to think about it, let's have a look at the other exchange that is actually over here. It's out of shot. It's the one that we talk about. It's the small village exchange, if that stops bleeping. And um, if you think about that small village exchange and you think about the actual uh, phones that are connected to it, the subscribers, uh, you think of it like a map. It won't look exactly like this, but you could imagine that the telephone exchange is sort of in the middle of the map and then around it is pretty much basically a circle of phones. Uh, and that's so, uh, it makes sense for one wire to go over to one phone and they all go over to phones. You can understand that that requires loads of multiple wires and it also means that they're private. But some, uh, sometimes uh, there was two houses that one house got built later maybe and they ended up having a shared line. This is a party line because um, let's say Miss Miggins uh, and Mr. Dumbledore lived next to each other and this line, they shared the line. Well, what if Miss Miggins wanted to have a private conversation with Mrs. Smith over here? Do not want Mr. Dumbledore listening? Well, that'll be difficult because Mr. Dumbledore could quietly pick up the phone and have a listen to the conversation. That's one of the problems of sharing the lines and sharing the cables. This is, as you heard, the party line. It's got party line in the term. So it's actually a bunch of shared lines. Well, <clears throat> In order for it to make sense, have a, have a look through the journal, but I'll try and sum it up in a very vague manner. So the issue is, is the map with the small village exchange and other exchanges, all of it is around it in a big circle. Well, if you think about a railway line, a railway lines around a train station, well, it, the map looks quite a bit different. Uh, you've got the train station, and then you've got a few lines going up, and all the phones are in one direction, well, for multiple miles going up, uh, certain train lines. So you've had, it's actually a different, uh, it's a different map and that involves a different type of exchange actually because it gets a little bit uneconomical to have a load of really long cables going up one line, load of really long cables going up the other line and there's not actually that much of a need because there isn't much of a confidentiality list, uh, issue because 
you know, if somebody's chatting and on that line, well, just wait for them to finish. It'll be nice, quick contact, and then it could go up. So initially, it was just a bunch of phones, and if the, let's say, the station, the control um, room or in the station stuff, wanted to call one of the lines, you just push the button, the bells just all go off, and uh, initially, apparently, in the, in the, it says that, so the different phones down the line had different codes. So the people who were there would understand the codes. So boom, I don't know what the codes were like. It's like, duh, 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 telephone. Uh, so if they hear that, then it obviously means it's for them. But what if one phone isn't needed to be called as much as of another phone? Uh, and then they kind of just like get desensitized to that ring because it's not for them. And then one time, quite important, uh, they, they miss their code because they assume it's for the other person. Well, this is where the issue comes in, where it, it's a bit annoying to have a phone just constantly calling and the bell's going off when it isn't actually for you. And that's where the selective party line exchange comes in. There's a few different methods of doing this. And there's another link below. Um, Sam Hallis talks about it, but this one does it in a really weird way. And we've got to talk about it. So these relay boxes at the top say select line. Well, these are actually designated to their own party lines. Each of these party lines, so there's 10 relay boxes here, and you can actually have 10 more on the top. So you can, in theory, on this single rack setup, have 20 phone party lines hooked up. And um, it, each of these party lines are able to actually have 24 phones on them. They could have more, but there will be 24 assignable phone numbers to call for the bells to go off. Um, you can actually, there is a setup where you can actually have twice that, double that, 48, but that means about making it a DC phone line and it's about literally switching the polarity. So you end up actually doubling the amount of phones you can call. But because of noise issue, because of the electricity and the electrical cables on the railway, the AC line kind of was supreme, so it was only down to 24. So down here is um, the register relay box and also the pulse generators, these ones right here. And this is the really interesting thing about this whole machine. So the register is in charge of controlling this. The register talks between the select line and the pulse generators. If you look at that image in that journal that Paul shared, you'll see that it's got select line and then it goes to the register and the register receives the pulses from the pulse generators. What the pulse generators are, are these little weird relays called galvanometer relays. And I'm actually looking for some. The problem is, and you'll find out as this video goes on, it's very hard to actually make the most of this machine unless we can either A, find phones that were made for this with these relays inside them, I'll explain it later, or just finding these kind of relays. There's a numerous different types of technology uh, that involve these relays. So if you recognize these relays and you've got something in the shed that's got these in, then please get in touch because we're really trying to find some to make the most of functioning and demonstrating this machine. Anyway, let's have a closer look at these galvanometer relays, shall we? So in total on this side, there is 24 of these. Uh, you'll notice that the numbers are all different on them. It's a little bit mismatched because I've actually put them in the wrong order and I still haven't got around to putting them in the right order. I will obviously when I need to, um, I might do that later after the video. But yeah, if you notice the biggest one is one, which is I'm pretty, I assume it's one second. And then the rest of them uh, are kind of go, down and there's 24 different different completely different pulses the idea is is if there is another one of these a matching one on the phone down the phone line well that will receive the pulses from this that match to it how it works it, it'll actually make sense when you see it doing its thing we've just got to make sure it's on it's not even on we've got to turn it on one sec i'm trying to remember which relay i flick there we go. You saw that. That just sent a pulse to all of them to make them start doing their wibbly wobbly. If we look really closely at a couple of them, you see that there is a pulse uh, switch on them as well. So there's a little bit of a pendulum. It's a little bit like clockwork. And um, if we get a bit closer and we look from the top and have a look at this part in particular, you'll see that this is actually the pulse sending part. So there's a pendulum, there's a spring, and there's something that flickers between these two points that sends the pulse. Do you see that doing its thing? Let's get a bit more in focus and do that again. Let's do it again. 
So if you think about it, this will send the pulse down the phone line and that will actually start pulsing another matching one of these at that point. And it's all about resonance of the machine. So if it's the same size and it responds to those pulses the same amount, the pulses will start amplifying its movement until the other, the slight difference is the receiving one has a contact around here. So when it builds up enough momentum for the actual pendulum to actually start wiggling and hit this contact around here, it makes the bell go off. If if all of the all of the actual phones with all of the receiving galvanometer relays, they all receive the pulse that goes down the line. The issue is, is it get if it gets a mismatched pulse, well, it's going to start trying to wiggle, but it will never get that resonant point to actually build up momentum to get to the full oscillating curve of what it's supposed to do. When it gets to that uh, contact on it, it flicks it and then it causes the bell, uh, the ringer or whatever in the phone to ring off and it will make the, the person know that their uh, attention is required at the phone. They pick up the phone and have a chat. Um, this has also got the function, because obviously it's a party line, to call multiple phones on the same party line so it can be a, called a conference call because you can all have a chat down the same party line. And if, if, if this person wasn't even being called, they could still pick up the phone and chat. So it's not like multiplexing, it's more like, you know, like you can imagine it as a dressing, like um, addressable LEDs, like a, down an LED strip. Each of them have an addressable uh, kind of number to them and they're only addressed when that address is called up. So this is like addressable phones down the same serial line. So it's a serial phone line with addressable phones. So you'll notice that there is two sets of these. That's because from my understanding is that you can actually, there, there can be two, with this machine, there can be two um, instances of uh, phones being rang. Remember, we've got 24 phones. We've got currently 10 uh, party lines that can be uh, selected. So that's 240 phones. If we have the other 10 relay boxes, that is what, 480 phones. And if it's in the DC configuration, you can double that again. And so there's a lot of phones. And then, the, the, you know, the control uh, uh, unit can call two phones at any one time. So there's a couple of phones, you couple of people on trying to call two different phones. There could be multiple phone calls going on, but there can only ever be two called. The bell is going off at any one time. How it works? Well, I've managed to wire it up a little bit. This is the other problem is there's no documentation for this and there's hardly anything on the internet. And as this is another video calling out for asking for any documentation because there's no labels anywhere. And uh, I've spent the last few evenings just kind of trying to piece it together. I find that this kind of technology, if you just sit and stare at it, follow all the wires on the back of these things, if you follow all the wires and see where they head to, it starts making sense. And the more time you spend just doing that, the, the it, is, it is a, you know, it's fundamentally, you can get to different building blocks. There's no real stop because everything is in front of you. You could sort of figure it out if you have the will to want to figure it out. There's a lot of other interesting things and we'll chat about it in a sec, but first let's demonstrate where we're up to with the setup. So if you look in that journal, there was an image of somebody in the control room with a switchboard. Um, unfortunately, there's no switchboard here um, because this got recovered from St. Pancras in 2008 and I'm assuming it was from the, I think it was from a basement room in the hotel, so it wasn't in King's Cross itself, so let, we'll, the, the switchboard's probably gone. And also the other thing is the phones, they weren't recovered because they're miles down the track. They're not in the same place. So it's only really the exchange that, that, it, that is surviving. So it's about trying to find the, part, the other parts around it. Uh, the switchboard, I think, won't be as big of an issue because the wiring's a little bit simpler. The, the other phones, if you look at this, they're trying to figure out the yeah, how to make that work via bodging it. I don't know whether it's gonna work without finding these. Anyway, so this is pretending to uh, be the switchboard. There's a couple of uh, switches here. We're gonna flick down. It's not exactly how it worked, but it will show you the demonstration. We're gonna flick it down. It's gonna turn on one of the party lines. It selects one of the party lines. So the person's like, okay, I wanna call Jim on, the, on, that, on that crossing over there or something, I don't really know trains. <laughs> and um, they, they know that it's on this party line which goes down that train track. Uh, so they flick it down on that party line. First, 
they push the first one, this listen, they listen to it to check if nobody's already having a conversation on that party line, and then they seize the party line register. Did you hear that? That sound was the allotter, the, no, uh, the line finder that is down here. So much like the UAX 13 that's over there, there is another uni selector sitting down here. Well, there's two, because there's two registers. And what these do is when you flick these down, it, that, these are directly wired to the back of one of these, which seizes the party line, but then that sends a pulse down to the line finder saying, hello, uh, one of us is wanting to make a call. And then this spins around and this is connected to each of these, um, these, but it tries to find the one that is asked going, hello, can you pick up? So we flick the button. This one tries to find it. It bounces between both of them. So we can't, we don't know which one it's gonna be in. So the first person that flicks it either could go there or there and then the next person ends up in the next one. So flick it down. It sounds like it was coming from over there. So the uni selector span around and found the party line uh, relay box that we are connecting to, which I think is this. Also for a little bit of information, this is one of the limited uh, labels that were on it electrification phones, testing equipment, key 15. Anyway, so we'll do it again. You'll notice there is another uni selector on these. This is the uni selector that when you dial the number that you want, one to 24, I'm assuming, uh, it will spin around twice to get to the number that you want. The number scheme might be different because this number scheme, because it's uh, this has also got 24 phones on this packs, starts at 20 and ends at 36. There's a reason for it. We won't get into that right now. So we're going to flick this down. We're going to dial it. So I'm going to dial 24 and then 23 screw it. So it's flicked over. It's sent all of these going, but there's a, it's only ever listening to one of them. So the actual pulses are all turned on, but it only sends one of these pulses down the line. So that pulse goes through this relay box and then out into the party line via a transformer and stuff. And that will trigger the uh, ringing phone that it wants to ring. So yeah, and then you can switch off the C's register, but the party line is still running. So you can still chat on the party line, but you've dis disconnected yourself from the uh, register and pulsing sections because you've already got the person's attention. This board over here is uh, still a bit of a mystery. So this is an extra uh, case that I, I, we're, I'm only assuming it came with it. So this, this is not connected at the minute and uh, it's a little bit confusing how it actually connects. This is, I'd love some documentation. It would clear the whole mystery up. But as you can see, it's got omnibus, omnibus, which is nothing to do with EastEnders. It's to do with train lines and stuff. You may recognize that if you know anything about it. I, I, I do not know. So code ringing omnibus circuit, code ringing, battery ringing. This is the other thing. It might not have just been connected to phones down this party line. There could have been other things that were connected to it, like other ringing circuits or horns or bells or something. I'm, I'm not sure. So a call, control ringing number circuit. Uh, some of these relay boxes are missing. Uh, yeah, there's a fuse alarm battery guard circuit. There's a few other uh, things. So this would be connected up here. The other thing is that's actually quite interesting is um, there is up here, uh, you'll notice that usually on the exchange stuff, there's a single set, a, a single row of fuses that go between um, minus 50 volts and earth. So battery is minus 50 volts and earth. Well, this actually has an extra one that is colored green and yellow. This is actually 6.3 volts AC. Now I know what you're thinking. That is the kind of volt, the heater voltage for, for a lot of um, valves. Well, there's no valves in this. I think the 6.3 volts AC is actually for the oscillator circuit. So this is another aspect I'm still trying to get my head around. And this is why I'm gonna love some specific documentation on this. But on the top of these relay boxes, there's a circuit up here that responds or that responds to a oscillation circuit. So if you actually send that 6.3 volts down the party line, which is the, uh, which is uh, that I found the outputs on the back of here, um, number one and two, U points number one and two for anybody interested. This seizes this line and, and yeah, 
and I'm assuming that will actually end up calling the control unit if it was all wired in. The other mystery about this, and this is what's making it exceptionally hard, is um, the actual tag board on the back. There is no labels whatsoever, it's just numbers. So I'm going off uh, what has been wired in before and trying to make sense of it. There's another wire also, this one, um, this has uh, got ring, it's got R and RR. I'm supposing this is ring and ring return. Between those two, it's actually 85 volts AC. Um, it's, I am assuming that's part of the actual ringing circuit because in that journal it did say uh, voltages between there. So, like a normal exchange, it's got um, uh, this relay box which is for alarms. Of course, we haven't wired the alarms in. I don't know what the alarms are for. I can see there's a relay saying FA, so that's fuse alarm. There's ALA, alarm, <laughs> um, SD, CO, FC, FB, alarm, FBB, FBC. So that's the alarm relay box. There'll be alarms for that. Um, and then these two are ringtones. So, um, yeah, ringtone and ringtone two. So there's two separate ringtones. I have not heard them working yet. The other thing is all of these have these tag boards on them. And that's the other thing. All, every, all of the kind of relay boxes have these and there's always a different way of plugging them in or unplugging them to either seize a line or make something not connected or to test something. It took a while to figure out that these six, they had to be plugged in because they were actually turning on the pulses. So they were separate tester points for the pulses, but they needed to be plugged in. Bit annoying, didn't know that. Um, so yeah, I don't know what the ringtones are doing yet. Obviously there is a ringtone in here. If you read the journal, it talks about a ringtone. Another thing that's quite strange is at the bottom down here, there's a few bare cables and a few weird machines. We'll have a look at this. So there's a few switches down here. There's also a meter that says pulse count meter. Uh, there's register overload, alarm bell cutoff, alarm cutoff, MF alarm cutoff. There's a bunch of transformers, uh, a bunch of fuses, and there's also a lovely neon uh, uh, bulb that shows you that the mains are on. This actually takes mains voltage as well. But strangely enough, the actual minus 50 volts and stuff is not in here. It doesn't put minus 50 volts out. There's actually two wires hanging at the top for another power supply. What this mains actually does, I'm not actually sure yet because there's no sense to it. There's a 6.3 volt AC that's over there, but I'm not sure whether this is sending it out. I haven't fully tested it yet. As you can tell, there's a lot of things to test. So it's gonna be one of those evenings when that comes out. Um, there's down here, this is a really funky old uh, voltage regulator. I still need to test the output voltage of that. So that'll be in the next part. And there's a big bear hole next to that, but also next to this bare hole, there's a bunch of random wires that are connecting. And there's also some down here. Uh, there's a box around the back of this that says ring interrupter. And there's also a switch over here that says motor start. So what I'm assuming used to sit here was a motor. <laughs> um, maybe a ringing machine, but why there's ringtones here and a ringing machine here, my assumption is, is the extra expansion box has a different circuit board for us at the bottom for sending out uh, AC current. Um, this ringing machine might have been replaced by a solid state one, which is actually down here. I'll quickly pull it's. I'll quickly pull the um, the cover off. So the motor has obviously been removed. By who it has been removed is a mystery. Um, it would be lovely to find some images of either A, this machine in situ, or B, well, yeah, just finding anything. But this, this cover, I'm just gonna get out so we can have a look at it. So this is the bit that makes me think that the ringing machine got removed because maybe it broke, maybe as this setup got expanded, because this was, um, this is, mid 1960s and looking at the relay dates on this one ah that's curious um that's weird <laughs> so okay okay maybe maybe they're not even uh, related so i don't know uh, these relays are all dated 1965 
And these relays on this thing are all dated 1968. So, woof, your guess is as good as mine. So um, this relay box down at the bottom of this thing is actually called the, oh, let's have a look. Let's have a look, see. It is called, come on, get in focus. It's called the SynCycle Static Frequency Converter. It's, from my understanding, it's not actually uh, converting the AC frequency. It is merely taking the AC frequency and taking it down to 6.3 volts and also 85 volts, for whatever reason that is, the 85 volts. So, yeah, a lot of problems. If you're curious and want to see this machine, um, it's at this museum's not obsolete already, so if you want to come and look at it, it's not going to do much. It's going to do what you saw in the video. Um, be my guest, come along. If you have any information, any documentation, any knowledge, any images, anything that is similar to this, then please get in touch. By the way, this is um, ATE, both of these rack boxes. Yeah, this is just a call out for number one, phones galvanometer relays or information or images or anything just to help the project along but yeah that's that was a long lot of spiel <laughs> have a lovely time I, i'm i'm sam and this is this museum's obsolete if you like what you see don't forget to subscribe and have a lovely time totally do What the fuck is that?